As of April of 2018, the long-range rear-wheel drive Model 3 was no longer available. But could it come back for the year 2020? I'm Jonathan Stewart, and welcome to Cleaner Watt. So currently there are only three variants of the Model 3 that you can purchase as of November of 2019. You have the Standard Range Plus, you have the Long Range All-Wheel Drive, and you have the, the Performance All-Wheel Drive. Of course you can still get the Standard Range off menu, which is just a software locked version of the Standard Range Plus. But I feel like there is a hole where the Long Range rear-wheel drive model could fit once again. Is it possible that Tesla could bring back this model? Now here's my theory and follow with me just for a second. So I know that on the quarter three conference call Elon Musk stated that the Model Y is not expected to cannibalize Model 3 sales. And, you know, we could argue back and forth whether this is going to happen or not, and whether Tesla believes it's going to happen or not is a whole other story. But no matter what, a smart business decision is to always plan for the circumstances that you can see possibly happening. So I think that Tesla is preparing for the fact that the Model Y could start to cannibalize Model 3 sales. As we know, the Model 3 has been cannibalizing Model S sales, and those sales numbers are going down. And what are they going to do to fix that? Well, of course, the Plaid Model S and X coming up next year, I think, is the answer to get those sales back up to where they need to be. Well, what could be the thing that could help them bring Model 3 sales back up? Well, there are several things that Tesla has done in, in the past, and I call these demand levers. They have adjusted pricing on different things. They have offered free supercharging whether through the referral program or for a specific model like the performance model or the Model S and X. They could, as they do at the end of quarters, sometimes match up um, extra features. They don't officially offer sales but sometimes they could do different features or what if they offered new models. So the current models that you can get, like I mentioned, there are three available. There's a standard range plus, which now has EPA rating of 250 mile range, and that starts at 39,490 US dollars. Then you have, of course, the long range all wheel drive unit, which is 48,490 US, and that's 322 miles. And then of course you have the performance model, which is 56,990 USD and 310 miles. So those are the three models that are currently available, but I'm thinking once the Model Y releases and if they see any dip in the Model 3 cells, they could bring out the long range rear wheel drive design. And the reason I think this is because if you actually pull up the US government's the EPA rating on their website, they have a rating for the 2020 Tesla Model 3 long range vehicle. Now, just because it's here in the EPA list does not necessarily mean that Tesla is going to for sure bring it back, but they went to the trouble to get this model specifically rated through the EPA. So I believe this is in their back pocket in case they need it. So your current lineup is the $39,000 unit, the $48,000 unit, and the $56,000 unit. I am assuming that if this model were to come back out, it would be somewhere there splitting the difference there between the roughly um, $9,000 difference. And so somewhere around forty-four dollars or 45000 could be the potential price for this unit. Of course, when it first came out in 2017 to 2018, people were paying 49000 base plus colors and wheels and things like that. So that would be a little less than when it first came out. But obviously, it has to be less than their uh, long-range all-wheel drive unit. Now, I believe this could be a good demand lever because it has 330-mile EPA range. That's a good range, and that's going to be a very solid range that could drive people that might be, maybe wanted a Model Y at 300 miles, could maybe go for a Model 3 instead 
because it's a little cheaper for the range and maybe they don't necessarily need the hatchback. It's another way they can drive people back over to the Model 3 and keep those production lines running. And so this is my theory. Of course, I could be completely wrong, but there is some evidence here since the model was actually rated by the EPA for the 2020 um, year. And so very interesting to look at. But I wanted to go over one other quick thing. What about the wild card? What if Tesla brings out the long-range rear-wheel drive Tesla Model 3 and they still don't see sales increasing like they need to and they want to pull one more demand lever? Well, they could also bring out the mid-range rear-wheel drive Model 3. I think there's less of a chance of this one coming out because there's not as much of a difference in the range, but there is one big thing that the mid-range rear-wheel drive Model 3 could have, and that would be the actual premium connectivity package. So right now, if you buy the SR Plus, or if you get the software locked version, that just the standard range for $35,000, you don't get the premium connectivity. You don't get live um, satellite for your maps and, and some features like that. There's several multiple features that you're not getting in the user interface, etc. There's some things that you're missing. You do get the premium interior still. You still get a nice interior, but you don't, you're missing some things. And so what if they just raise the price $2,000 more than the standard range plus? You get an extra 14 miles range. You'll notice there the EPA rated the 2020 mid-range to at 264 mile range. So you get 14 more miles. You get the premium connectivity. You get all those features that you'd get in the premium models for maybe $2,000 more. The cool thing is it wouldn't cost Tesla that much more maybe just a little bit a few extra kilowatts of power with their new efficiency ratings to get that 264 and this would allow them to make pure margin because the software being pulled back that software being pulled back and, and not having pre premium connectivity that's just pure margin because that's just a software lock that's nothing more than just taking away features that are in the software that doesn't cost more and so that could be two thousand more dollars directly onto their bottom line and so this is this is, these are some of the things that i think tesla could do i think it's very possible that the long range rear wheel drive model will come back once they get the model y running and if they need it as a demand lever or maybe just um once they get their battery supply really stabilized and they have plenty of batteries you might once again see this 330 mile range vehicle come back i really believe that tesla was proud of this unit because of its range for its price and the only reason i think that they got rid of it was because they needed to maximize profit and by using that all-wheel drive unit that increased their average sell price that they needed to but once again when that's not necessary they will be able to possibly bring this back the 330 mile range long range rear wheel drive model 3 and um, I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of people would be happy about that so thank you so much for watching this video and thank you so much if you are a subscriber if you're not a subscriber go ahead and click the subscribe button and also the bell icon so you know when new videos are put up and then also in the comments below let me know what you think let me know if you think that this model is coming back either the long range rear wheel drive or the mid range rear wheel drive let me know what you think and um, if i'm right if i'm wrong if i'm way off or if this is a good idea thank you so much and have a good day